You know this company inside out, and you've also seen how difficult it is for it to monitor this sort of very heavy-duty technology it's developing, and it, it, it needs humans to be able to assess the content as well as robots. Facebook has a pattern of releasing products first thinking about the social implications, the things that would make it great for connecting with your friends and family, and only later thinking about the societal implications, the things that could go very wrong. Uh, we saw this with the, the fake news uh, situation that they had after the election last year. We've also seen this over and over with Live. This is a product that uh, you know Mark Zuckerberg demonstrated for his daughter's first steps. Other people have used for, for similarly innocent reasons, brushing their teeth. That's how it was marketed. But the problem with this kind of thing is it's very difficult for Facebook to tell if a video is actually broadcasting a murder, for example. Mm. You could be easily showing somebody a trailer of a movie that has a, a violent scene in it. How can Facebook's artificial intelligence determine that versus something that's actually terrible and violent and not allowed on their platform? And so at the moment, they've talked about using AI, yes. but they've also weaved humans into the situation and used, what is it, four different offices that are meant right. to be able to judge and categorize whether some of this content is indeed disturbing. How can they actually well, speed the whole situation up, really? So they right now have the people sort of training the algorithms. Um, but like I said, that's very difficult. So right now, the way a video gets flagged and taken down is if actual users see it first and then mm -hmm. say, this video needs to be taken a look at. And then somebody in one of their offices giving 24-hour monitoring around the world will review it and decide whether or not it should be up. But that whole process is long. And so the way they could speed it up is by actually building the data off, off enough video content that comes in to be able to detect automatically. That said, you don't want to remove someone's video if it's not actually bad. And they've had some instances mm -hmm. where they've removed content that isn't. Like the example, for example, the, the Napalm Girl photograph that got removed for being considered child pornography when, of course, that is a Pulitzer Prize winning picture. And iconic indeed. I mean, this has got to be something that is affecting, uh, as we build artificial intelligence in general, but also Facebook isn't the only company that does live streaming, isn't the only one using right. video. I mean, has Periscope ever been affected by this? Twitter? What, what have other companies done? Absolutely. I mean, so many companies have been affected by this. And, and the thing that I would note is, is this is something that advertisers are worried about too. Mm. In in uh, as far as, as we can see in Facebook's history, the ads have been separate from the content, right? When you look at your newsfeed, the newsfeed ads they look like posts from any of your friends. As Facebook moves more into video and starts thinking about video ads, they're gonna start putting ads or they have started putting ads in the actual videos, tying advertiser content to other content. That opens up kind of similar issues that you've seen with YouTube and Google, yeah. where they've had ads tied to messages that are extremist, racist, etc. And Facebook's going to have to start to navigate those waters as video builds up on its platform and as they start to make more money off of it. And navigating those waters, coming out and, and apologizing and indeed speaking to those who could help them. It's interesting. It's F8 is about to be upon us. It's Tomorrow. the the storm. Yeah, and do you think Mark Zuckerberg in his keynote will address this to the developers that they bring to this part of the world? Well, what I'm really interested in tomorrow at F8 is Zuckerberg earlier this year put out this manifesto, they call it Mark's Letter, which in which he outlined uh, over the course of 5,000 words exactly how he thinks Facebook can go beyond connecting the world and start to improve the world and make these communities tighter, help our, help our civic engagement, make sure we're more informed people. And so I'm really curious, I mean, those are all very vague things, but this kind of instance does play into it this live video that is maybe has a, a shock value or makes it le makes facebook feel less safe to be on yeah. i mean these are all things that he's going to have to address in a in a broad way i don't i honestly doubt that he will mention the murder um, in the most important public address of the year that he's going to give it at f8 tomorrow um, but i think that he he will definitely talk about using the tool facebook the network to try to you know, make everything a little better, but whatever that means to them. The